Hello and welcome to today's workshop, Global Networking with GEO. This workshop is brought to you by Pathfinder. Pathfinder is an extracurricular program for incoming first and second years at Northeastern. We provide a safe and inclusive space for students to discuss and pursue their passions. If you haven't already, you can join Pathfinder using the link in our chat. Our applications are rolling and open to first and second year students. You can also join our moderators, um, their third, fourth, fifth, and recent graduates of Northeastern. And on our website, you can find more information about our program and additional resources. If you're looking for more of our workshops, you can check out our YouTube channel or our podcast to see all of the workshops we had in spring semester. And now I will pass it over to Gio. Hello, everyone. Um, so thank you so much for having us on Pathfinder. My name is Nora Salmon. I'm the Associate Director of Global Experience Advising in the Geo office. Um, and with me today, I have Catalina Cardell and Jeremiah Chandler, um, two Northeastern students and two students that have been on global programs um, and also that work at GEO. So um, to give you a brief agenda for what we're going to talk about is I'll start and provide an overview, um, a very high level overview of what is GEO and what are GEO programs. And then we'll do a Q&A between the three of us so that you can really hear the student experience and um, get a more personal sense of like what a student's time is like on a particular program and then when they return from a program to um, Northeastern. Um, so the Global Experience Office or GEO as we um, refer to it, I wanted to kind of give insight from like our office perspective and then um, how we talk to students. So in the office beyond what you might think of like study abroad exists, a big piece is that um, is kind of the theme that um, we heard at the beginning about networking. So a big piece of GEO is developing partnerships with our global network. So international universities abroad, international organizations, anywhere all over the globe. Um, and Northeastern as a campus is expanding its global network so that there's campuses um, both international and domestic. So we have um, campuses in San Francisco um, it's being developed. There's one opening up in Maine as well. So I'll touch on that as we go for further along. Um, but really, um, GEO's goal is to create inclusive learning communities in pockets of the globe and really foster global learning, global competence, um, and help students through their journey here at Northeastern, both in Boston and abroad. So when we're talking to students though, it's why do you want to do this? Why participate in a global experience? I think everybody has a unique personal reason and you'll hear um, Jeremiah and Kati's personal experience. Um, but in terms of what makes it unique to Northeastern, there's many reasons and we'll share a lot more later, but um, Northeastern is unique is that in that when you go abroad, you do earn Northeastern credit. So it really is taking your time at Northeastern and expanding it wherever you are around the globe, continuing and advancing your degree um, there's a plethora of international networking opportunities while you're abroad. You meet people from all over the world, both Northeastern students, international students, international faculty. Um, and it truly is a way to really like gain a different form of cultural understanding and competencies. Um, in some cases you learn and practice new languages. So there's just like a lot of elements that um, we truly believe that an experience abroad, in addition to your experience here in Boston, is a way to just make a full comprehensive degree. Um, so a quick kind of overview, this is a snapshot of the variety of programs that we have to offer. So Northeastern is um, really interested in designing programs that can fit anyone's personal, professional and academic background. Um, so we have programs that vary in length anywhere from one week to an entire year. And then we have global degree programs, which would be all four years. Um, there's programs suited to pretty much any major. So I think, it, you know, there's definitely a misconception that like, depending on your major, if you have a pretty um, unique like STEM major, let's say, or computer science that you can't go abroad, but um, there truly is a program for every major. And in terms of study abroad, what's nice about Northeastern is it's not just going and studying in another classroom, there's all different forms. So whether that be like a full experience where you're, you are never physically in a classroom, maybe you're doing an international internship, you're on a dialogue, which I'll talk about. Um, and it could be with our faculty or um, with international faculty. 
So Dialogue of Civilizations, most commonly referred to as DOCs, um, and that's what we refer to it, as well as our students, their faculty-led program. So it's Northeastern faculty leading students. They're only offered during summer one and summer two. Um, outside of the current year, we offer um, about 70 programs that go to um, 136 or so countries, and we typically send about 1,400 students abroad every summer. Um, on a program, there's about 15 to 30 students. Students take two courses, earning eight Northeastern credits. Um, and a, a goal of it too is you fulfill your new path. So um, both Kati and Jeremiah have been on a dialogue and I think hearing kind of their experience um, will be key. Um, in terms of study abroad, um, the difference between study abroad and a dialogue for us, which both are forms of study abroad, is that on a study abroad program, you take classes with international faculty at a foreign institution um, or a Northeastern network campus abroad. Um, these are offered during fall, spring, summer one and summer two, or there's an academic year option. So it's really kind of figuring out what kind of, what do you wanna study that enhances what you're studying here on campus. Um, you learn from international faculty, like I said, so it could be a totally different perspective than what you're learning in Boston. Um, and it really is a unique way to connect with um, different peers too, because you're learning alongside peers that you wouldn't necessarily go to school with here at Northeastern. So semester in is a form of taking courses in um, one of our network campuses. So this is a growing piece of GEO and it's an exciting piece as we move into 2022, um, more to come. But it's kind of a unique way to take what you're learning in Boston and put it in a totally different context. Um, you would learn from a combination of Northeastern faculty and then faculty based in that region. So we, two examples are the New College of Humanities in London. We have a semester in program and then we have one in San Francisco. So we have Jeremiah with us and he has been on NCH, the data ethics and culture program. So he'll speak to that as well. Global Quest for any student that's a first year student. Um, this is a unique first year program. So it's a year long program in a sense that you enter Northeastern and live in a living learning community. So you live as a cohort, um, you would involve yourself in activities, extracurricular and curricular. And then in the spring semester of your first year, you go abroad to two select locations based on your major. The two locations for spring 2022 are the New College of Humanities in London and that's for um, CSSH and DMSB students, and then American College of Thessaloniki in Greece, which is for our um, CAMD, COS, COE, and Bouvet students. Global Co-op, um, and Kati will be speaking about her experience. Um, so Global Co-op, I know anyone at Northeastern knows the term co-op as your internship experience while you're here. Um, conducting your degree, but it's taking that into a global context. So working internationally, um, there's teams within each college and GEO supports the colleges with Global Co-op in terms of visa resources and orientations. So Global Co-op can be a paid experience or unpaid. There's the Presidential Global Scholarship that really helps make that accessible. So it's a $6,000 scholarship. And in terms of how to get this started, it's really speaking to a global co-op coordinator in your college. And I will turn to Kati in a bit to explain how she got started on her co-op. Okay, so how does this work financially if that's crossing anyone's minds? Like I wanna go abroad, but how does it even work um, in terms of the cost? So when you study abroad, whether it be a dialogue semester in or um, a semester abroad at one of our partner universities, you are paying Northeastern tuition the same way as if you were here taking classes on campus. The benefit of this is that if you use financial aid, if you're accessing scholarships or however you fund your time um, to you know, pay for your academics, that funding is the same way um, you can utilize that abroad. So it's um, accessing your financial aid can be used to, like while you're on a study abroad program. We always talk to students about the cost of living of the location. Is it an expensive destination? Is it a more affordable destination? And how does that work with budgeting? And with that comes scholarships. So GEO is really dedicated to continuing each semester. We'll have new scholarships, new grants. Um, our funding opportunities could be merit-based. Some of them are um, need-based. And then some are based on an application that you might do like student um, 
blogging, videography, um, and photography for us, which is really great. So it's kind of a different way to kind of access funding and see which ones you'd be eligible for. Some programs have their own funding. So if you pick a destination and you're not sure, um, for example, I advise for New Zealand and when it does open back up, one of our partners, it, just by going to um, New Zealand, there is access to education um, scholarships at through the Ministry of Education in New Zealand. So it's kind of understanding who to talk to. And myself as a geo advisor, where I'm on a team of six, we advise by regions of the world. And we want you to ask, like, I want to go to Italy, let's say, like, what is the scholarship for this program in Italy? I'm this major, maybe there's a scholarship based on your major. So um, part of what we do in our advising is really figure out the niche ways for you to access funding for that program. In addition, um, we have a first time travelers grant. If you've never been abroad, there is additional funding to help you take that big leap. And we work with um, the President Ayun Scholarship, which connects with our cultural centers and students are nominated through their access to student org. So in terms of who supports you, um, what we help you with um, your application support, figuring out which classes to take. We do um, orientations with students so that they feel ready to go abroad. and. Um, and then we have a whole international safety network that supports students with any concerns based on their specific destination or anything going on in the world, such as the global pandemic. Um, Find at Northeastern is a 24 hour um, anywhere in the world mental health support. So we connect students with that and it's really figuring out what resources to use here while you're in Boston and how can you access those resources abroad. And that's part of what we wanna support you with as geo advisors. Um, so how do you connect with us? We're excited for um, the upcoming year to have more in-person events, um, but we have virtual events and we'll continue with those. So we have all sorts of events, but definitely if you want to have like individual questions, we encourage you to talk to a geo advisor. We will have peer advisors back in the office for fall 2022. Very excited about that. Um, Kati is a peer advisor and she's been a peer advisor with us for the past I think three years, maybe <laughs> I like lose track of time this past year, but um, she's an excellent support. And it's just really a great way to, you know, talk to a student, hear about their experience and have them connect to you even with other students. And then we have all sorts of events um, throughout the semester. Um, they're up on our website and we're happy to connect you with you on them. Um, real quick, in terms of um, GEO's efforts and making sure that students feel comfortable going abroad, we do offer a series of events called My Global Identity Series. Um, so these are developed in collaboration with our student centers on campus. So we work, for example, with the LGBTQA Center in, um, and this can be for a student that's like, maybe you haven't applied abroad and you want to talk to someone because you're thinking of going abroad or maybe you've returned from coming up from being abroad and you want to kind of debrief that. So we have, these are all recorded at this point and then we'll have live sessions returning, but it's really a way um, to create a safe space to talk about things that are very specific to your personal identity or identities and figure out like how will this manifest potentially while I'm abroad and what things might come up. Um, so we've partnered with the DRC, um, the Social Justice Research Center, um, the Center for Spirituality and Dialogue. So, you know, we've had students that are practicing a certain faith and they're going to a location where that's not the dominant faith and they're nervous about that or they're trying to figure out just like, what do I do? Like, how does this work? Um, and these sessions are really key for that. Additionally, on our website, we have a student blog, um, student voice blog, sorry, that's what it's called. But it's, um, you can read through, but you can actually search by category. So if you're like Italy, I don't know, being, being a female in Italy, let's say, um, and that's how you identify, there's, you can, it'll pull up blogs based on that topic and you can kind of just read through the student's personal experience and watch their videos. Um, and I think that really helps students kind of feel like I can do this maybe, or like I could talk to this student and they would help me with some of the things that I wanna talk through. Okay, I'm gonna pause and turn it over to Kati to introduce herself. My name is Katalina, and I also go by Kati, either one. Um, so I'm a recent graduate, actually. Um, I studied mathematics with a minor in computational data analytics. And like Noya said, I work as a peer advisor 
um, for a GEO and I'm working over the summer as well as a peer advisor. Um, so just a little bit like about my background and my experience um, with the global experience at Northeastern. Um, I always knew that I wanted to make travel a part of my education at Northeastern. Um, I've always traveled a lot, so I knew I wanted to incorporate that. Um, so the first um, experience I had was on a dialogue after my first year, which I think is a really great way to kind of get started um, with the global experience at Northeastern, just because you go with um, a Northeastern faculty and with other Northeastern students. And especially after your first year, it's a great way to meet new people. Um, I know a lot of my friends went after their first year as well. And I also knew that I wanted to pursue a minor in Spanish at the beginning. So it was a great way for me to kind of complete those requirements. Um, I did the Spanish language and culture dialogue in Peru. So we spent um, five, six weeks in Peru. The first couple we spent in Lima and we actually got to stay with host families, which was really incredible. And then the last one, we went to Cusco where we saw like Machu Picchu, Rainbow Mountains. We kind of did more sightseeing. So the first part, um, which was the longer part was more like classes. We would take Spanish classes in the morning and then do excursions. Um, and see different parts of the city or of Peru and on the weekends we would travel as well so it was really um, getting to see all of those different cultural sites as well um, and that was really just a great way to get started um, and kind of like dip your toe in the water with the Northeastern global experience um, and then after that I knew I wanted to go abroad again and I definitely wanted to go back to Latin America um, so I decided I wanted to do my second co-op abroad, um, but there wasn't really any, there are, we do have global co-op set up um, through NU careers and everything, but when there wasn't really a job that I found called to me, so I actually self-developed my own co-op in um, Paraguay. And I did this just kind of by reaching out to a bunch of different companies I found online and letting them know about Northeastern and the co-op um, program and just letting them know that I was available and if they were looking for any interns or anything. Um, so I actually ended up finding the perfect co-op in Paraguay and I worked for an NGO think tank there and I worked as a data analyst for them, which was really like kind of the next level in my global experience just because I went to a country that really I not only knew no one there, but I really knew little about it, um, the country in general. I know like when I would tell people I was going to Paraguay, they'd be like, oh, Uruguay. And I'm like, no, Paraguay. Um, I think it's very little known. So it was a really incredible experience just to be able to go and discover it on my own. Um, so it's much more of individual growth, I would say. Um, and then I started working as a peer advisor for a GEO, um, just because I know that I've gotten so much out of my experience here. Um, and I really wanted to give back and help other students who might be nervous or questioning or just trying to figure out how to go about it, um, which has been a great way to connect with other students as well and talk to other students. Um, and it always feels great when like a student comes in and they have a bunch of questions and I can answer them and then ask after I can see that they might be like much more confident about going out. So that has also been very great. Um, and next I'll be moving to California to go to USC for my master's. Sweet, so thanks for sharing, Kati. Uh, I'm Jeremiah, I'm a fifth year student here at Northeastern University. I'm studying political science and international affairs with minor in ethics. Uh, and I'm actually a transfer student here at Northeastern. I joined after my second year and I transferred to Northeastern primarily because I knew that I wanted to study abroad and I knew that Northeastern had a ton of opportunities through their international study abroad office. So uh, after my first semester, 
on campus. I actually studied abroad, like uh, Nora said, in London at our partner institution, the new College of the Humanities. And that was really an incredible, uh, incredible experience to have abroad, especially your first experience abroad. Katsu mentioned how she went on a dialogue of civilization and there is Northeastern programming, there were faculty and, um, you know, with the semester in programs and dialogue of civilization classes, there's lots of Northeastern programming and uh, staff that's there to help you throughout that process. So for a first study abroad experience, I definitely recommend one of those. And that was uh, a really, really great experience. And it helped me <laughs> kind of figure out what I wanted out of my degree. And I added an ethics minor after it. So uh, really, really awesome experience. And after I was in London, I studied abroad on a dialogue of civilization to Rome, Italy. And that was the uh, discovering the Eternal City, uh, an incredible dialogue. I'm super biased, but it's definitely <laughs> my favorite dialogue. So you guys should totally look into it. Uh, incredible faculty, uh, Daniel Faber, who teaches that. Um, and that was really incredible. And the nice thing is that there is a wide variety of different types of courses you can uh, take during a dialogue. Um, each dialogue has different ones available depending on your major. And so the Eternal City had sociology uh, classes, which counted for my international affairs degree. So that was super helpful. And uh, I got to conduct regional analysis there. So uh, that's a great opportunity if you're in CSSH, especially if you're international affairs. Um, after that, I uh, left from being abroad and then went back abroad after my co-op um, and studied in Paris. Uh, this was a traditional study abroad, so it was very different from the Dialogue of Civilization and from the Data Ethics and Culture Program in London, just because when you're doing a traditional study abroad, uh, it's really your responsibility to make sure that you're signing up for classes, go and find resources and help, reach out to peer advisors like Katsi and reach out to um, faculty and staff at GEO to help you make sure that you're signing up for classes that count for your degree. But I studied abroad in uh, Paris and that was really, really incredible. It got cut short early because of the pandemic. So that was a wild experience, but I must say Geo did really help me <laughs> get home safely. So I do appreciate that. But um, I studied abroad in Paris after meeting a couple of attorneys at my co-op who um, referred me to a couple of different schools in Paris. And some of them had studied at Sciences Po for their master's degree before getting their uh, JD. So they all recommended. And uh, when I went there, I actually got to meet with a couple of faculty members that they recommended. So those were all people that I met through Northeastern and um, got to see realized when actually studying abroad. So and actually, most recently, I just started a remote dialogue of civilization yesterday <laughs> um, with Japan 20th century. So I'm hooked on geo, I guess. <laughs> Can't get enough. And um, like, uh, like Nora mentioned earlier, I'm a co-op student here in the GEO office working as a human resources associate. So I'm helping uh, facilitate the hiring of staff for some of our international programs. But so that's my little bit. So I'll turn it back to Nora. So first, thank you for listening to that whole spiel, especially mine, which I know is I tried to power through there um, and just have a conversation with Kati and Jeremiah um, so that you can hear a little more of like how they came to find their particular programs and like their path at Northeastern. Um, real quick, all of our information is northeastern.edu slash geo and then here is um, our general email and our social handle for everything is at Northeastern Geo. All right, so um, to get started, I guess, Kati and Jeremiah, could you share, um, who do you suggest speaking to first if you're considering going abroad? And um, if you can share a little more about like what specific steps you took to make your study abroad experience happen? Like, who did you talk to? Your family, your friends, your academic advisor, et cetera. Sure, yeah, I can start. And then Kati, feel free to add. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a couple of different people that I'd recommend talking to, uh, you know, really beginning with your personal network of people and kind of deciding why you personally do want to study abroad. How does it fit in with your academic and professional interests? Uh, the first people I talked to were my parents, my mom, and trying to figure out if I do study abroad, where would I want to study abroad, you know, for my major degree, I focused and spent a lot of time studying Eastern European politics and power structures and was thinking maybe I should continue studying Europe or, you know, I 
did some English secondary language teaching in Europe as well. I was thinking maybe I should diversify my studies. Maybe I should study somewhere else. And, um, you know, the first people I talked to were my parents and my mom. And my mom said, you know, you've been studying French for since middle school and you've always talked about wanting to go to France. Maybe you should go to France. So that really helped me out. <laughs> and she reminded me, yeah, no, you're right. I do want to study in France. Um, so, you know, I would definitely recommend going to your personal network first and kind of checking with your friends to um, just to remind yourself, what are your personal interests and your professional and academic interests? And after doing that, um, I would definitely recommend talking to your academic advisor. Um, that's really just to make sure that you're taking all the classes that are going to count to your degree, ones that fit into your degree audit, um, and making sure that the classes at the partner institution you're studying abroad at will count for your major or NU path requirements. Um, and after doing that or before doing that, either way, um, definitely talk to the GEO peer advisors, uh, people like Katsi and other people available to you in the GEO office. But Katsi might have better insight on who exactly you should talk to there. So I'll toss it over to her. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think now is a really good plug for the GEO peer advisors. Um, I am biased, but they are honestly like a great help, um, especially if you just like are just considering going abroad. That's really a great first step just because then you can um, normally during normal times when the offices are open, you can just walk in at any point and there's always a peer advisor there that you can talk to. Um, and just like hearing from them, even if you do have an idea of where you want to go, then they can kind of walk you through the process of like figuring out, say, if you want to do a dialogue or walking you through the different programs. And then say, if you want to do a study abroad, a lot of times it's really hard to figure out um, on your own, like the courses to take or the course equivalencies. And we can kind of like walk you through that and show you. Um, but like Jeremiah said, the academic advisors are also a really big one because you definitely need to figure out that the courses you're taking abroad, um, that they'll be okay in your academic plan. Um, and then after that, like after the peer advisors, once you kind of have more of an idea of where you want to go specifically, um, the GEO advisors are a really great tool and they each have like a specific region that they're really experts in. So you'll have a specific GEO advisor to talk to. Um, and then also just like Jeremiah said, just talking to like your network. Um, I know for me, I talked to different people who had um, gone abroad to like Latin America um, just because I knew that's where I wanted to go but I wanted to check on their experience um, just to see it, what it was like and it, that really convinced me that that's where I wanted to go so yeah. And if I could just add one more quick thing, um, you can also definitely tap into your professional network of people, you know, if you have um, contacts that you're still in touch with from a previous co-op, you know, it doesn't hurt to reach out to them and say, hey, you know, I'm studying abroad and considering these locations, because after my first co-op, I, you know, talked with a couple of different people in my office to see where a lot of them had gotten degrees from international locations or had studied abroad at some point or worked abroad even, and they also provided contacts for me to reach out to. So definitely take advantage of the professional network that you already have available to you now, and it could really help inform your time abroad too. I guess, can you, um, either of you or both of you, please speak to a little bit about like how you made it work budget-wise um, in terms of um, like if you can speak to, if you have, I know Kati, you've talked to students about scholarships, if you can share a little more on like what you talk to students about, and then um, maybe how you funded your time during your co-op abroad or just during your study abroad experience. Yeah, definitely. So first off, in terms of budgeting, it's really, it has to be a personal thing. Um, you kind of have to decide and look at how much you want to spend. Um, so you know, you know, if you're taking courses, it's going to be Northeastern tuition. So that's kind of nice because you don't have to factor in like other tuitions from different schools. But in terms of like the dialogues specifically, there's also that dialogue fee that comes with it. So I know for my dialogue, um, 
the fee, some fees um, are less and some are more depending on the program. But usually then if the fee is a little higher, it might include more like meals or things, or if it's an excursions or if it's lower then you're kind of on your own for meals. It really depends on the specific program. But I know for mine, ours included say like dinner um, and breakfast at or I host families. So I know like a lot of students would still go out for dinner, but I kind of made it a point of mine to at least during the week to always have dinner at my host family, um, which I think just setting rules for yourself like that while abroad, um, knowing um, if you wanna save X amount of money or spend X amount of money and just setting specific rules like that is really good. And then on the weekends, I would kind of allow myself to go out more. Um, so that's just, like a specific example for budgeting type. Um, and then in terms of co-ops abroad, they are like, to be honest, usually they are, they do get less paid than traditional like domestic co-ops, but it also really depends on the co-op. Um, so a lot of the ones that we have set up, you can see if they're paid or not. And depending on how much um, you can take or a save, um, that's really up to you if you're willing to take an unpaid co-op. But GEO, like, um, like Noah mentioned before, we do also have the Presidential Global Scholars Program, which is a huge help and you can get up to $6,000 um, for a global co-op. And that really helps offset things like travel and meals and housing. Um, I know for mine specifically, I was able to get um, at least some salary and my travel and housing paid for it, which was really nice and gave me a little bit of balance. Um, but again, some of them are not. So I would definitely, if you're looking into co-op, no matter global co-op, no matter what, I would definitely look at that global scholars program. Um, and then I know Nora mentioned this before, but for any program, we have the first time travelers grant. Um, which is obviously for first time travelers, but there's also first time traveler grant um, for anyone, for students going to the NU network locations and haven't participated in a global experience yet. Um, so that's not just like if you haven't gone abroad in your whole life before. So there's two different ones for that. Um, and then another really cool thing, which I haven't personally done, but I've been on dialogues with people who have done it, is the fellowships, which Nora touched on a little, where you can kind of do like a video blog or essays or like, um, write a blog each day um, and then kind of get some reimbursement for that, which honestly is just a cool thing to have. Um, I know I like to journal while I'm traveling anyway, just to remember things. So it's a great way for you to document anyway. Um, and then while you're doing that, also make money for it to help offset the cost of travel and everything. Okay, I, I guess what I was thinking would be helpful for um, the students listening to Pathfinder is if you could speak to like the different experience you've been on, um, like how did they connect with your um, professional or academic goals in terms of did you build a network, did you connect with faculty, um, what or other students, like what type of connections did you make and how did it advance um, your time here at Northeastern in your opinion? Sure, I can speak to that a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing that comes to mind is when I was studying abroad in England and in France, there are Northeastern University alumni networks there available. Uh, and it's not in every city in the world, but ma major cities, there's definitely uh, a high chance and high probability that there will be an alumni network there. Um, and Northeastern has a ton of different uh, events that go on to connect you with different alumni in the area. So when I was in London, they had, it was in a really nice building somewhere and they gave a presentation and all the Northeastern alumni um, that were a part of the group. I think there's about 80 different Northeastern alumni ranging back to 20 years were all there and made themselves available to co-op students that were in London, uh, study abroad students or any sort of current student that was in London for whatever reason could go and meet there. So that was extremely helpful. Um, you could go and see how did you make it from Boston and Northeastern and now you're working in London, how did you do that? And if that's something you're interested in, it's definitely a great opportunity there. 
Um, uh, other ways that you can build your network, uh, we, Katsi and I kind of mentioned how uh, the dialogue of civilization is an excellent opportunity to make good relationships with other Northeastern students, but also Northeastern faculty as well. They're faculty led trips and you're with that same a faculty member for you know a month up to two months even um, and that really is a great way to foster a good relationship with them uh, the Daniel Faber on my dialogue of civilization is an excellent faculty member and he actually wrote letters of recommendation for me so that's super helpful and so those are the types of connections you can make on the different um, study abroad uh, opportunities that way as well uh, Kati did you have anything to add um yeah just in terms of like networking while abroad, even with other students on dialogues. Um, like we said, it's with other Northeastern students, but the really cool thing about dialogues, it's usually like a big mix of different majors and everything, because a lot of, like me personally, I use the dialogue for my minor, but also for any path requirements. So it's kind of a way to get out of like your Northeastern bubble, which you can kind of like get more stuck in with like people in your major or like your friends. Um, so it's a really great way to meet new people. So I had people from all different types of majors and like say um, the, I had some electives left and I knew I wanted to take a design class, but being a math major, I knew nothing about the KMD or design department. And, but I knew a girl on my dialogue who I kept in touch with um, was a design major. So I could kind of ask her like her opinions um, on different electives and different professors to take. So that's just like an example of how these connections can really help you in your education. And then, like Jeremiah said, he got a recommendation from his faculty um, on the dialogue, and I also got a recommendation. It's really a great way to make like that connection that you might not make in regular classes with um, a professor. And then in terms of global well, well co-op, that's a great way to make professional connections from all over. Um, I know when I was applying to graduate schools, I had my boss from Paraguay um, write me a letter. And that I think that really just gives a different spin and like diversifies your application for a lot of things, having like that international aspect to it. Um, so I'd say that's a really great way to network as well. Um, and then can you speak to a little bit, did your, um, do you feel like after you went abroad on any of the many programs you all went abroad on, you felt like it helped you um, in speaking in interviews when you're looking for a co-op? Kadi, you just touched upon it, so maybe Jeremiah, I know with NCH you met with like Northeastern faculty and um, local London faculty. Did you feel like that helped you at like when you returned to campus and trying to figure out with your co-ops? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, London maybe isn't that different from the US when compared to other countries, but I mean, especially, you know, studying abroad with faculty in Paris, they have CVs, they don't have resumes, the interview process is entirely different. And, you know, I didn't go for any interviews, but I met with faculty members and they had different workshops that were available there. And that's the nice thing, depending on the institution you're studying abroad at, you're usually able to take advantage of the clubs and organizations and resources available there. And so when I was abroad in Paris, I definitely felt like it helped me even just being able to network internationally. Uh, it, it definitely feels a little different from just trying to connect with other people, you know, from your university or from your city or from your state. When you go abroad, it can feel a little different. And uh, when I was in London, I definitely met, uh, yeah, it was a mixture of Northeastern faculty and NCH faculty. And so having, taking advantage of that connection between the two is um, extraordinarily helpful. So. Yeah, thank you both. I think to wrap it up, I just wanted to ask, and um, this is kind of a cliche question that I think comes with study abroad, but um, for all intensive purposes, I do love the cliche, but um, if you could share a little bit on, because um, I both, I know both of you have shared this with me is like, once you returned from studying abroad, do you feel that it changed you in terms of like how you approached your studies or just you personally and how, like what next steps you're gonna take in either like your academic career or your professional career? Yeah, definitely, I can start. Um, it is like the cliche, like study abroad changed me, oh, going abroad and everything, but it really is true. Like just, 
I would say, especially with things like the traditional study abroad or the global co-op, really going on your own and being in a new place um, and kind of figuring everything out for yourself in a new foreign place where you don't have that um, initial network set up is really just an incredible experience. And even like talking about interviews before, it really gives you more confidence in like everything you do. So going into interviews, going into anything where it's like a new setting, like a new job or anything, it really helps you. Um, because like, if you can go to a totally different country and maybe you don't even speak the language, then like really like what's an interview. So that definitely helped me. Um, and then in terms of figuring out like future career goals, um, that's part of the reason I decided I wanted to go to graduate school just because of working in Paraguay and seeing what I could do there with like the limited education that I had in like I know like some Python um, and seeing like what a difference that made. Um, I knew that I wanted to further those skills to be able to return in my future career. So it really kind of gave me an outlook onto my future career goals. And like, I wanna be able to return with even more experience and even more skills, um, which I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do after. So really like that was life changing to be able to figure that out. Um, I don't know if you have your own experience, Jeremiah. Yeah, I would definitely say Kathy hit it on the head where after you study abroad, it really feels like you can conquer a lot more. And I had never taken a data science class before, but that first program I took was data ethics and culture. And I had to take data science 2000 and data science 2001, which was terrifying. But after the end of the semester, I finished it with an A, which I never thought was possible. And now I felt like I could conquer anything, but I did not add a data science minor, I must admit, but I was happy to see I could do it. But it definitely, you know, like she mentioned, you know, you go and live abroad if it's a lot of people's first time abroad or even just, you know, traveling without your family, traveling without friends, going to a new country, it really does encourage you to get out of your comfort zone and take advantage of the networking opportunities available to you. That might sound a little bit cliche, but, you know, going abroad to a new country and the only point you know is uh, the Northeastern Alumni Network. Go to the Northeastern Alumni Network and meet them and you'll meet people through that and you'll, you'll really develop important, crucial um, networking skills that will serve you in any environment, professional, academic, uh, personal even. Uh, it really helps you just be able to carry yourself well. And definitely one thing that I would say uh, that studying abroad has really, really changed is that now I have really strong connections in lots of different places in the world looking to graduating and, uh, you know, what city am I going to end up in? Where's the job? I have really decent connections and strong connections and where I studied abroad and where I co-opt. And so it, it's somewhat comforting to know that there's probably uh, two to three people that I know in a lot of the places I'm considering working afterwards. And so that's something super helpful. Um, even if you wanna just <laughs> travel abroad, you have, you'll have you find couches to crash on. <laughs> if you study abroad, you'll meet people. Um, and honestly, that environment when you're abroad and meeting other students who are abroad, it is a very bonding experience. And uh, you do make a lot of really strong connections out of there. And I'm in touch with people from every single international study abroad experience I had through GEO and GEO has a couple Couple of different events where uh, alumni from a program will meet and you all get to reconvene a month after returning to campus and so that really helps solidify the friendships that you made abroad and and professional networking relationships you've made abroad all the things but <laughs> yes uh, I would say that's one of the um, best ways that it changed me uh, moving forward. Yeah, I guess last plug before I stop talking for GEO is um, we do have pre-departure events. So events that connect students, we hold um, a very informational session that prepares you for um, the cultural change you'll experience as well as health and safety. But then um, we have a social so that maybe it's like a pre-network experience. Like you all find out like, oh, you're going on a co-op and you're in Germany, I'll be in, let's say Austria. Like we're the only people in that region so let's connect and we hope students do connect and then we do it on the reverse we hold re-entry events um, and the idea is that um, when you come back a lot of times you just want to like debrief your experience and reflect on it and then 
um, it's really cool to do a comparison too. So, you know, it might be something like Kati just got back from Paraguay and Jeremiah just got back from um, the New College of Humanities in London. So two super different experiences, but then you're all in the same room and you all have activities where you have to debrief. And oftentimes we have a keynote speaker at that, um, which is just another way to kind of like take that um, experience to another level. So um, I hope this was helpful. I'm really grateful that Jeremiah and Kati shared. And like I said, you can contact us at any point. We'd love to hear from any student interested in a global opportunity. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, all of you. Um, it's so great to work with Geo, and I really hope that in the coming months and years that we're able to see more of those programs um, and that our Pathfinder students are able to take advantage of those as they pursue their Northeastern career. So um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs>